The presidential debate moderators have been announced. First debate, NBC's Lester Holt. VP debate, CBS's Elaine Quijano. Second debate, shared between ABC's Martha Raddatz and CNN's Anderson Cooper. And the third presidential debate on October 19th, a Fox News anchor for the first time, Chris Wallace. I sat down with the host of Fox News Sunday shortly after the news broke. Chris Wallace, welcome. Thank you. How does being chosen for this presidential debate, how do you feel about it personally, and what does it mean for Fox News? Well, it, it is an enormously gratifying thing to be, to be chosen. Obviously, the, the Commission on Presidential Debates has entrusted one of the three to you to be the moderator, to, to help tens of millions of Americans make up their mind comparison shopping between the two, or if one of them reaches 15 percent, one of the third party candidates as well. And I'm very proud to be a representative of Fox. This is the first time that w any journalist from Fox has ever been chosen to moderate a general election debate. So I'm very proud for that. There are, as you know, Fox critics out there who say, oh, it's a right-wing network. It's a network that favors Republicans. Does this help dispel that perception by building on the work that you and Megyn Kelly and Brett Baer did during all the primary debates? Well, I, I have to think that I don't know this, but I have to think that the commission uh, which is really a, a, a blue ribbon panel. The, the two chairs are Frank Farenkopf, former Republican National Committee Chair, and Mike McCurry, uh, who was a Bill Clinton, his first press secretary, but there are also a number of very distinguished people on the commission. I have to think they looked at the debates and the work that we did and thought, these guys were pretty tough on Republicans. They're, they really are going to be fair and balanced. To coin a phrase. <laughs> uh, now, when you're on that big stage in Las Vegas, it's not like hosting a Sunday show, correct? No, it's, it's very different, and, and I'm very mindful of that. Uh, it isn't coming up with a killer question, not coming up with the, the great follow-up. I, I see myself as a conduit to, to ask the questions and, and basically to get the two candidates, or as I say, mm -hmm. if, if one of the other people is on the stage as well, one of the third party candidates, but to get the candidates to engage. I, I view it as kind of being a referee in a heavyweight championship fight. If it, if, it's, if it succeeds, when it's over, people will say, you did a great job. I don't remember you ever even being on the stage. Well, I understand that. I think that's the right approach, not making it about you. On the other hand, there's a lot on your shoulders, both in terms of the question selection, but also as they go at it, let's say Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, um, what do you do if the, they make assertions that you know to be untrue? That's not my job. That's not I, job. I do not believe that it's my job to be a truth squad. It's up to the other person uh, to, to catch them on that. I, I certainly am going to try to maintain some reasonable semblance of equal time. If one of them is filibustering, I'm going to try to break in respectfully and give the other person a chance to talk. But I, I really want it to be about them and gay. It's, I want it to be as much of a debate. People so often talk that it's simultaneous news conferences. Right. I want it to be as much of a debate as possible. Frankly, with these two and the way, you know, as, as Keith Jackson used to say about football rivals, these two just plain don't like each other. Uh, I, I, I suspect I'm not going to have any problem uh, getting them to engage with each other. But I don't view my role as, as truth squatting. I think that's a step too far. And if people want to do it after the debate, fine. It's not my role. Uh, now, there is a lot on your shoulders. Uh, it's a great honor. But also, you have essentially sole discretion to decide what topics are going to be covered and how the questions are going to be crafted. Um, are you going to... How do you go about drilling down to decide what to pack into that 90 minutes? Well, I, I, first of all, I didn't really know what went into it, and I'm learning, and it, it, it is a little daunting. For instance, the way the debate is organized, there are going to be six topic areas, six buckets, if you will, and, you know, one might be immigration, one might be ISIS, and on and on, and each one, the moderator asks a question, and each of the candidates gets two minutes to respond. If you assume it's two candidates, that's four minutes, and then you have uh, the remainder of, of the 15 minutes for that bucket to engage the two in a conversation. I, I asked one of the people on the commission yesterday, well, who decides the six buckets? Because somebody has to tell the campaign, the two campaigns, uh, a week in advance, what are the six buckets? They said, you do. <laughs> and I'm like, really? They said, yeah, you, you decide well, what, no. what the topics are going to be, and we tell the campaign, no. and that's it. No committees, no bureaucracy. No. Your father, Mike Wallace, had an extraordinary broadcasting career. What advice do you think he might offer you? Well, he, uh, it's funny. I've thought about this a lot. Uh, he would be very proud of me, 
I think he probably would have tried to steal it from me <laughs> because that's, <laughs> that's who he was. Uh, he was known to uh, have sharp elbows. He did. Uh, and I think that he basically say, just do what you do. And, and yet it's different than a Sunday show, but just ask smart questions, listen, uh, follow up in the sense of if somebody says something, try to engage the other person and get them to engage with each other. And again, understand that this isn't about you, it's about the candidates and it's about the voters having an opportunity at the end, because this the last debate will be less than three weeks before the election, an opportunity for voters to compare us and shop the last time they'll see these two on the debate stage together. Chris Wallace, do what you do and thanks for doing it with us. You bet. New York Times reports that Hillary Clinton's campaign didn't want anyone from Fox News, but the debate commission is independent.